which means in today's video we're going to be checking out all of Girls and Entertainment's weird and wacky events. War Thunder Mobile is bringing back the ponies akin to the very first uh, April Fool's event that was actually in War Thunder. However, the mobile game is now testing air mode and you can have a bunch of fun with ponies. It seems there is uh, just a bunch of fun flying magical things. So you can enjoy that and earn some interesting rewards and, and, and partake in some ponies. If only I had a way of recording War Thunder Mobile or else I would have checked it out already. Anyway, next game. Enlisted brings us the World War II zombie COD style, if you know what I mean. Uh, basically waves of enemies coming towards you on a single defended position with limited room to maneuver. It does give us the ability to shoot various other uh, types of zombies and as the zombies progress there is different types and they get more and more uh, uh, just uh, in intriguing to fight. Guys with propellers on their heads, bombs, you know, wielding bicycles and, and doors and various other things. It's also gren grenadiers and zombies that shoot back. It's it's all a whole lot of fun. And if you kind of like that kind of style, then I highly recommend you check it out. But there is other surprises. For example, these paratrooper zombies. Uh, they're quite a pain to deal with, but also uh, later rounds they become an absolute menace when you're trying to fight on a, a hordes of things. I thought that was kind of cool having uh, little things and it comes up with little witty messages on each level up like uh, for example don't look up for example and there is ability to get uh, med packs and ammunition but you can also have the Call of Duty style boards of buying and, and getting better weapons. So every kill you get equals a certain number of points and you can resupply and do a various other bits and pieces as well as get some other upgraded kit and it's particularly interesting to see and I must say it's it's a very very fun and addicting event uh, I recommend you highly check it out. Other than that there are a couple of bosses and unique elements in the thing and if you get downed well you know if all four team members get down yeah, that is a defeat and anyway there you go zombies. Modern Warships gave us container racing, uh, which is very interesting considering that uh, we're all in oil tankers that look like the Ever Given, uh, although without the cargo things. And it is very similar to regular War Thunder racing where you can just go nearby a checkpoint. You can get bonuses and upgrades that give you bonuses to speed, health and, and various other repairs. As you hit people you only have a certain amount of HP. And it's just generally a pretty interesting just arcadey... Well, would you call it a, a, a racing event and it's quite interesting and it's something that uh, you should probably check out if you have the time.
Now, Wolf Hunter has a cross-out-esque uh, Escape from Tarkov parts collecting, hunting, and PvP game mode in which you have to run over boxes in order to collect parts and resources in which you then can upgrade your vehicles and essentially just makes it a, 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 a mini-flexing crafting event. Gameplay is sort of synonymous with that of a regular War Thunder desert map. However, there are these locations which you have to uh, go to, which are marked on the map, which you then have to, you know, find resources and collect them. If you extract with these resources, you then get to craft with them in the crafting menu. But for the most part, it's just South African SPAA mixed with a couple of other unique vehicles and you know, you upgrade them and they get rockets and things and slowly, slowly you can unlock the April Fool's Awards. There is team play and there is a free-for-all as well and you basically just kill each other and you get these points and tokens to upgrade your various vehicles. We'll go over the various vehicles that are available and uh, the, the crafting section in a moment, but gameplay is basically shoot at enemy vehicles if you see them and basically collect as much resources as you possibly can it's not overly the best event i think enlisted's event is ultimately better but there are uh, ways of, of running around and basically driving on the same map 60 times look it's fun there's unique game mode in terms of like feel and the vibe but ultimately it just comes off as a mad max australia clone that allows you to also buy unique snail packs for 30 us dollars each in which have uh, various different uh, i don't know items and 5000 ge a sticker and a, and a unique title the future belongs to the snail and riding to snail hulla but eh, that's kind of just tacky uh, tacked on stuff now let's talk about the crafting obviously right here what we have is after you play a first battle you go through and there's available vehicles you then got to go to the next stage and unlock different things there are radar resources and stuff that will help you find resources and other stuff like that and there are mechanics which allow you to get smoke and then obviously the last tier is some of the other uh, variants of vehicles that uh, and, and rewards that you can get from playing in this event like a unique profile icon a flag some decorators and and what have you and all that kind of sort Quickly taking a look at the War Thunder vehicles. This is a Boss Vark, also known as the Boar, and it's got a couple of cosmetic upgrades to the vehicle and does have a capacity upgrade. If we go have a look at the modifications, you can see uh, the unique crew members inside the vehicle. They've actually got wacky helmets and various other things. Modifications wise, you do get uh, a look at that lock range and and the other modifications and the only other stat here is the cargo capacity which it says at the top of the screen right there so each vehicle has a different cargo capacity and different armaments and so on and so forth this is the armadillo it's got extra armor plate on the front is basically just a regular btr and follows the cross out law of of kind of being just a <laughs> armored chassis again three crew same 30 millimeter gun then we get on to the mule which is only armed with two 7.7 .7 machine guns and there is another variant which has a bigger machine guns laid down the line but this is your cargo carrying vehicle with a hundred uh, cargo space which allows you to carry more you got the reptile which again is kind of cool just another Czechoslovakian anti-air vehicle that was added recently you've got the gunner in the back on the what appears to be a bofors i can't remember the modification status on that one and then we get the upgraded strong ball which is the last upgrade of this particular vehicle as you can see it gets a recall this rifle and a couple of machine guns this is the btr strong armadillo it gets a rocket pods these are the bm14s now the flat rad gets a very solid mule sort of icon which is very angry gets a dozer blade gets an auto cannon on the top and still the same machine gun at the rear it's got side plates that are slightly more armored and has a, a capacity of about 80 but yeah look it's a flak rad that uh, allows you to do weird things now the last reptile variant is a strong reptile and it gets access to well i, I presume those look like rocket pods Again, you get the crazy crew members. These are your Hydras, and they are 70 of each in each pod. That doesn't quite mean that. But anyway, you get the last a solid Echidna variant, which is just the Swedish anti-air that's been fully upgraded. 
you get some various structural engineering going on here and then it's just an open top empty air for the rest of it now there is the strong rhino which is the only one that i could preview out of the rhino series for some reason the test drive links weren't working for the rest of them but essentially you get the british weird thing with the cannon I'm pretty impressed with some of the events. The War Thunder event itself is a bit disappointing considering that they didn't go with ponies and there isn't a secondary event like they did last year or the year before, but the same sort of desert sort of appeal, it's not really the greatest thing out there. The ponies could have come to the regular game as a part of an anniversary and maybe I'd like to see them actually have an event where they actually combine some of the other older events. But hey, it is what it is. War Thunder Mobile is going to have their own thing and each game is going to be unique. Uh, for Crossout, I couldn't figure out what was the April Fool's event for. I, I just couldn't figure that one out. Maybe that was why they just did a Mad Max and, and had enlisted with zombies in it, for example. But honestly, the best update, uh, this is the Call of Duty style zombies. Uh, out of all the April Fool's events for Guardians games this year, it's been, well, this one that has been the best. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. My name is Ash. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.